factory in Las Vegas, Nevada. And Gary, tell us what you're doing here, sir. Well, what we're doing is basically recreating history. Yes, yes. Okay, first you make history and then you repeat it. And so we're repeating that history here. So what you see in this factory today are Cobras being created all over again with genuine Shelby serial numbers. They go in the Shelby registry and the small block cars keep the small three inch round tube, you know, straight from the original design, the leaf spring suspension, while the big block cars like we see here have the larger four inch round tube frame and adjustable coilovers. In fact, Johnny, if you've got a 65 Cobra, we've got parts for you. John, this is a CSX 4000 Cobra. It's a virtual continuation of the CSX uh, 4000, 3000 series that we had in the 1960s. Now, continuation, you may know, wait a minute, this is a 1965 Five. car, but it's brand new. 427 Cobra. 427, but it's brand new. Right. But it's a 65 model That's right. that somebody can buy from you today. So you can, since you got one part, and you can get an engine, which happens to be an FE or a Shelby, genuine Shelby motor and transmission, and then you will have a shop put it together, or you can recommend some folks who would put it together. Sure. And now you've got a brand new 1965 car. This is probably the most famous car model in the world, would you say that? Well, it's certainly the most copy. Yeah, when uh, Motor Trend Magazine came out here a couple of years ago, and they were looking for the most significant car built in the last 50 years, they chose the Cobra. Normally we wouldn't show you body wrapped in the plastic that is used for a protection. But this car is a very special car because once again, AC Cars in England is back in business thanks to Shelby Automobiles. We've asked AC to produce once again bodies that are hand rolled on the original wooden bucks. So this body just came in off the boat, hand rolled from the original bucks in England with today's craftsman on the English wheel. Some of the guys that were young men at the time in the 60s, maybe 17, 18 years old, hanging out at the factory, they never lost the bug. And in fact, some of those same hands are what's building these bodies today. A lot of people don't realize Shelby American is back in business and we're building cylinder blocks and heads. As you can see, a lot of extra webbing right here in the galley. I've actually got a CS logo cast right into the block and uh, six bolt mains on two, three, and four. So uh, a lot of beef in these new blocks from Shelby. We also have, getting back to the cars, bodies in fiberglass, bodies in carbon fiber, and bodies in aluminum. Well, Johnny, here we are in the engine shop at Shelby. You can see a pretty much completed Shelby 427. Shelby aluminum intake manifold, water pump, heads, and of course the block and so forth. We've stroked this bad boy to 468 cubic inches. This is the Cobra World Champion Daytona Coupe. 1965, this thing beat all comers. Took the World Manufacturers Championship away from Ferrari and brought it home to the United States for the very first time. Hood opens this way. As you can see, only six of these were built originally. This has your small block 289, nice Weber carburation right here. 1964, Carroll realized that on the short tracks, the Cobra was extremely fast and always won the competition. But against the Ferraris, on the long straightaways at Daytona, Mulsanne, places like that where it really needed the legs, 
big air wall at 155 miles an hour with this kind of shape. So you had the Daytona coupe design, much sleeker, got the fastback type design, you got air coming through the nose, but much lower, much smaller, exiting here, which reduced all the lift that you got at high speed and also added some downforce, revolutionary in its time. With that fastback design, it changed the top speed of that little 289 from 155 miles an hour to 180. Just another day at the office, Johnny. If you would like to know more about the new Shelby Cobra, visit their website or call them at 702-942-7325. Carol Shelby, a living legend. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages. Calling all road warriors, river racers, and trailblazers to your adventure connection. Allman Cycleplex in Shreveport, the largest dealership in the Arklatex, celebrates 20 years in the motorcycle business. Allman Cycleplex has the largest selection of bikes, skis, and ATVs. The most complete lines of Yamaha, Kawasaki, and Suzuki. Plus the biggest certified used inventory. One shop for sale, service, and accessories. One stop at 6817 Greenwood Road off I-20 in Shreveport. Allman Cycleplex is not your ordinary motorcycle store. Ford Weekend is an organization developed by Ford enthusiasts to promote Ford drag racing and car show events. Fun Ford Weekend is dedicated to the growth and development of Ford performance. They provide an enjoyable and fun-filled atmosphere for racers and fans. Go to funfordevents.com and check the schedule to see which of the 14 events you can attend this year. Power, performance, reliability, confidence. The standards by which we expect our vehicles to perform by. ATS Performance makes those products that put the power to the ground. With our line of high performance torque converters and transmissions, you can feel confident about putting the power to the ground and getting to where you need. ATS Performance, paving the way for the diesels of today. Presenting Johnny Rowan's newest CD, On the Highway. On the highway, that's where I dream. It is my Mustang. How about for a cabin Mustang? Get on board. A cabin Mustang. Head of the rest. My Mustang. Set me the Other great songs from Johnny Rowan. Twelve ninety five plus shipping and handling. Order your CD on the highway with Johnny Rowan at GunsandGears.tv. Order now. We're here today in a beautiful spot in Ravel, Louisiana. As this March weather's tough, this young man is Alvin Parker, and he has Magnum air rifles here in Ravel. And that was a great day to be out shooting, isn't it, sir? Oh, yes, it is. It's a beautiful day today. No question, friends. And, of course, you can't, all of us can't be here, so that's why we're here with the camera. <laughs> well, we're going to be looking at some air rifles, and air rifles worldwide are getting to be a huge sport, aren't yes, they? Yes, a huge sport. You've got, you know, places nowhere to shoot now. People can't shoot, so what they do, they grab an air rifle. It's quiet, safe, and it doesn't cost near as much to shoot. I mean, it's a very economical sport. Well, and we're going to see some air rifle performance, I think, that's going to be surprising to a lot of people. Well, you know, Alvin, I'd like to get the program underway, and I always like to shoot something. that I got my 460 pistol, and, of course, you got a watermelon out there. And Well, now that air rifle, Magnum air rifle, would you want to shoot it? Could we see it if you shot it with the air rifle, you think? Uh, yeah, there wouldn't be nothing left of it. You're a kid? No, I'm not. Well, let's see. All right, sounds good to me. Get out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a pretty unbelievable uh, experience. Uh, of course, Alvin Parker, Magnum Air Rifles here in Ravel, Louisiana. Did I get that right, Alvin? Yes, sir, sure did. Friends, this is a, <laughs> we 
When they told me air rifles, I'm thinking pellet gun. Well, Alvin, uh, you can actually take big game. You can take take deer with these. Yes, sir. It's legal in a lot of states to shoot air rifles with deer, and all exotics are legal to shoot deer with. I mean, you shoot. There's people in Texas, uh, Eric Henderson, he guides and does hog hunts, auto dad, all kinds of things over there with, uh, you know, air rifles. With air, air guns. Right. Friends, this is fantastic. In fact, uh, Alvin, tell us what this gun is you're holding there, sir, please. This right here is an all stainless model with a... Uh, with a Green Mountain 40 caliber barrel. It shoots uh, 185 grain uh, hollow points right at about 935. Now wait a minute, 185 grain hollow point bullet. Yeah, pure lead hollow point uh, custom molded bullets. I mold these bullets or you can buy a standard pistol bullet to shoot in this gun also. And what caliber is this? 40 caliber. 40 caliber. And this is the one you shot the watermelon with earlier? Yes sir it is. This is the one I shot the watermelon with. This right here is a 70-75 T6 aluminum end cap, has one inch of thread with a Viton O-ring, built-in check valve, stainless steel tube, uh, which contains your compressed air. You get here to a 70-75 T6 aluminum valve, Delrin internals and springs. This right here is your hammer assembly with an aluminum end cap. I build these guns now with uh, Timony triggers, so you can adjust the gun from three and a half pounds to about six ounces. This right here, you pull the handle back, pull it back, insert your solid lead bullet, slide it up, automatically locks in place, gun's perfectly safe, you can drop it, won't fire, until you cock the gun. Once you cock the gun, it is ready to fire. You can decock it by just pulling the trigger and easing it back up. This is an aluminum breech with uh, standard rim fire dovetails, BKL mounts. This happens to be a a uh, nice piece of uh, Brazilian cherry wood that I carved out for this stock. It's a little big, but I built this for a box stand. As far as barrels, it depends on the caliber. I can pull rifle my own, button rifle my own, but it's easier to buy them nowadays. This is a Green Mountain 40 caliber. I use Schilling, Hart, Douglas, um, Packnor barrels. And we make uh, our guns in these calibers. This is the 20, the 6 millimeter the 30 caliber, the 40 caliber, the 50 caliber, and the 20 millimeter. And by the way, this 20 millimeter here weighs 1,007 grains, and it will put out about, oh, 15 to 2,000 foot-pounds of energy out of a little bitty air rifle. This is a custom shroud that covers the barrel that helps keep the, the racket down a little bit, but this right here is a custom multiple break we built to uh, strip the air off the back of the bullet. Uh, we're finding that that is giving a lot better performance over your 100, 200, and 300 yard ranges. This right here is a custom thumb hole zebra wood stock we've built, and this gun only weighs about five and a half pounds rigged out with a two pound scope. Now accuracy wise in the six millimeter on these guns with this new shroud and uh, muzzle brake setup, we are getting some one hole groups with a new subsonic six millimeter bullet we build. And at 100 yards, we're shooting half inch groups. Now this gun on a 3,000 pound fill shooting these bullets at 925 will shoot uh, 16 times with this gun without a point of impact change with about a 42 to 45 feet per second deviation in velocity. Now on our 40 caliber, which is a lot more powerful gun, uh, 3,000, 3,200 pound fill, you get three to five shots, but you're shooting 185 grain bullet. This right here is a uh, Clara Walnut stock titanium tube. This is a Schilling 1 in 10 select match barrel, aluminum breech. This gun right here shoots 115 grain boat tail hollow point at 875 feet per second for four shots. Um, that we deer hunt regular with pistols like this. This is our six millimeter shrouded model, uh, all stainless action. This is a lace wood stock. These are real handy, light guns. You just wouldn't believe the weight, easy to tote. They're good for somebody that likes to hunt thickets or get up in a climbing stand. It's just a good gun all around to carry around. Doesn't recoil at all. My wife loves to shoot these models. This right here is a Honda motor with a military surplus compressor. Uh, It'll air your gun up in about 30 to 45 seconds, weighs 65 pounds. These units aren't that affordable, but for a person that shoots a high volume, this is a great way to go. Now, for your starter that don't want to spend a lot of money, you got two options. you got a scuba tank, which is uh, charged to 3000 You don't get uh, very many fills before you have to refill your scuba tank, but it's an easy way to an for an amateur to get into the, the sport. 
or somebody wants to go hunting, they air the gun up, they carry it out, they can put this in their backpack. This hand pump right here, it pumps to 3,500 PSI, weighs probably three pounds. By the way, Johnny, let's start shooting, because, man, I am tired of talking and looking. I love to shoot. If you want a Magnum air rifle, then Alvin Parker is the man you need to talk to. Call him at 318-341-0525. Guns and Gears will be back right after these messages. How would you like to have 44 Magnum performance on your 1911 style pistol? You can with our 460 rolling pistol kit, available on our website at gunsandgears.tv. With our 460 pistol kit, you can shoot the super powerful 460 rolling shell as well as the standard 45 ACP in the same gun. With our 460 pistol kit, you can shoot the super powerful 460 rolling shell as well as the standard 45 ACP in the same gun. The easily installed kit includes a new custom compensated barrel, custom springs, and a full length recoil guide. Only $275 plus shipping and handling. Order your conversion kit at GunsAndGears.tv. <laughs> For solid shooting support, Choke Machine and Tools presents the Choke Rifle Stabilizer. Cut your offhand group in half. There's a reason many of the finest gun makers choose Choate Machine and Tool Stocks as standard equipment for their guns. Choate has an unbeatable combination of quality and value. To order, call toll free 1-800-972-6390 or go to RifleStock.com for Choate's full product line. Clark Custom Guns is one of the most famous and greatest names in custom guns worldwide. Jim Clark Sr. set the highest standards for accuracy, reliability, quality, and service. His legacy continues today with Clark Custom Guns' full line of gunsmithing on the best handguns and rifles. Now offering the Clark Gator Rifle and other extra special models for the gun enthusiasts who will accept nothing less than the very best in shooting performance. Clark Custom Guns, 318-949-9884. Georgia Arms wants to be your ammo company. They feature a full line of best quality handgun and rifle ammo delivered right to your door at the lowest price as possible. Whether you have a 9mm or a 357 Magnum or a 454 Casula, one of the great 460 rolling guns, they've got your ammo. Maybe you want cowboy action shells or precision plus long range hunting ammo with Nostler Acubon bullets. Maybe you want components to load your own ammo. Well, call them to order 1-800-624-6861 or go online at georgia-arms.com. Have you ever wondered how the racing industry turns an average engine into a high-performance, mega-horsepower producing machine? Here are a few of their secrets. Hi, Scott Main here, MPG Head Service in Denver. I'm bringing you power to the pony. Today we're going to talk about Cleveland cylinder heads. And the thing that's nice about a Cleveland cylinder head is, as you notice, most cylinder heads, the valves are straight in line. But if you can see here, they're kind of zigzagged. That's basically for airflow purposes. This head was very ahead of its time, and Ford had high performance horsepower in mind when they designed it. So by canting the valve, when the valve opens, if you'll note, it actually goes towards the center of the cylinder. And actually, if, the, if my hand is the cylinder, it creates clearance there which lets it breathe. The farther the valve is away from the cylinder, the deeper breath it's allowed to take. And of course, the deeper breath that it can take, the more horsepower it's going to make. Yeah, on a canted valve head, as the valve opens, it moves away from the cylinder wall, which allows it to uh, take a deeper breath of air, which an inline valve can't do. You know, it's going to stay perpendicular to the cylinder wall, can't take as deep a breath. And, you know, air flow is the key to making horsepower. So this head is all about making horsepower. They're way ahead of their time. They have huge intake ports. They have nice small combustion chambers with centrally located uh, spark plugs. And they have a pretty good exhaust port. Could be better. That was kind of one of their flaws, but 
you know, nothing we can't deal with. Now on this head here, we've actually cut it for O-rings. And with everybody's uh, tendency to go with supercharged engine these days, O-rings are a nice low dollar way to keep the head gaskets in the motor when those uh, boost pressures get up, you know, 10, 12, 15, 18 pounds, they'll have a tendency to push the head gaskets right out. So by uh, cutting these rings in, these grooves, we can take this wire, pound it into the groove, and that actually encompasses the fire ring of the head gasket, which you know has a tendency to help it not to get uh, pushed out under high boost pressures. So that's a good thing to do on uh, any cylinder head when you're supercharging. Here's uh, your basic uh, gas ported piston. These are 043 wide top rings. And normally that ring really isn't strong enough to seal very well. But they are light and in high RPM engines a light ring is what we want because it'll follow the piston as it you know reciprocates up and down quickly. You know 27,500 feet per minute is a lot of piston speed and a heavy ring can't follow that so we need a lightweight ring. The problem is a lightweight ring won't seal very well. So we put in these gas ports and the gas port allows combustion pressure to go directly to the ring and actually expand it when the compression hits. So the, sprint, the, the ring will expand, seal against the cylinder wall under the compression stroke, then relax and, and create a low drag situation which is good for friction. And then on the next cycle, the valves will close, the pressure goes up, the pressure comes through these gas ports, expands the rings, it seals hard against the cylinder wall, makes a great seal, especially at high RPM where, you know, that's tough to do. Over here we have the valve release. In these high performance engines we need big camshafts. Big camshafts have a tendency to run into the valves, or run into the pistons. And so we cut these valve release in, so when the piston's up and the valve is open, nothing crashes. Okay, we're back here in the cam department and uh custom grind all our cams here in-house, hydraulic, solid, solid rollers, hydraulic rollers, we can do them all, and it's uh, it's pretty much the brain of the engine, you know, with the profile we put on the camshaft really dictates how the engine operates, where it wants to make its power band. So the term grinding a camshaft, we're actually watching that, because that's what you do, you grind it to a particular profile. Correct. This is the uh, big block Ford Pro Stock block. It has the priority, priority main oiling system, which makes sure that we get lots of oil to the main and rod bearings and not up to the rocker boxes where it does no good. It's got the splayed four bolt caps. Uh, this is a very heavy engine and made to uh, handle 1600 plus horsepower with no issues at all. This is going in a uh, customer's 67 Fairlane, and it'll be about 602 cubic inches. Should make, uh, well, I'd like to think around 950 horsepower. Now, this block features splayed main caps, which means the outer bolts are at an angle, which uh, create more st strength and stability for the cap. When you get up in the uh, big horsepower numbers, 900 plus, these caps will start walking around on you, which uh, has a tendency to cause problems, shorten bearing life, et cetera, et cetera. So any support we can give is a good thing. Stay tuned for more Guns and Gear. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the Silver Line booth here at the SEMA show talking with a young man. This is Dan Scheid, and he has a very special uh, dragster here. Dan, tell us about this car, sir. Okay. This is a 300-inch Spitzer car that uh, we've just recently got put together. We've got a 5.9 uh, Cummins engine in it, and we've got a twin-turboed. We're looking at uh, in excess of 1,000 horsepower, 1,500 foot-pounds of torque, and uh, we've built the fuel system for it and the, and the air system for it and the water injection. And we're using, utilizing a uh, Linco drive transmission with torque converter and a uh, strange rear end. And uh, um, we're sponsored here by Anza Automotive Silver Line. Well, that's, that's okay. Get a word in for them. This is great stuff. Now, this is a unique, a diesel dragster. What kind of speeds are you expecting out of this car in time? Our goal is uh, 200 mile an hour and then uh, six and a half second quarter mile times. 
And there is no, I, I've never seen anything like this. Is this the only one? Are you looking at a new class or what do you intend? Exhibition runs? What are you going to do? We'll be doing exhibition runs and we will be looking at new class sport uh, through the Diesel Hot Rod Association. And uh, they've started this organization for diesel pickup trucks and uh, uh, for diesel engines as a whole. And they will have a uh, top diesel dragster class and we will be running it in that. Now this young man is Bill Mitchell. He's a pretty famous guy, and he's going to tell us about a new Ford block. So, Bill, what is it, sir? Well, this is our new 302-351 block. It's got several new features. We added two extra head bolts on each uh, cylinder for the guys that are running a lot of boost in the, uh, in the engines. Um, it uses all standard OEM hydraulic roll lifters. It can use uh, dry sump or wet sump. Uh, it can go to 4200 bore. It, Stock out of the box takes a four and a quarter inch crank. Mm -hmm. What that means is in the short deck 302 version, you can go up to 375 cubic inches. Great. In a uh, 95 version, which is a 351, you can build a 427 or a 460. So you now can get big block cubic inch numbers out of the small block. In addition to that, we have a new uh, modular block for the late model Fords. No this, this was developed by uh, Sean uh, Highland Motorsports, yes. and um, we're doing all the machine work for them and distributing it. It can go to a uh, uh, 3.7 bore with a four and a half inch stroke. So the modular guys now can put 380 some odd cubic inches in it. And you put a dual overhead cam and cylinder head on it, and you got a real hot rod. So. Well, now, this is something that the modular fans have been really asking for for a long time. And this is the first super quality race modular block out there, isn't it, Bill? That's correct. It, uh, to my knowledge, it's the only one. The only one? The only one. Or when will these be available? Uh, these will be available about the end of December. And the 302, 351, we started machining them about a week ago, so they're available now. Available now, friends. The extra head bolt, these are really terrific products. These folks have a great company. Bill, thank you so much for visiting with us. We appreciate meeting. Thank you. And lots of good luck to you.